Hi guys, welcome to Nerd Bites. Let's go and feed my spoiler review for Defenders Season 1. Before we begin, yes, there will be spoilers, but I'll put them to the back end of the review. But most of this video is going to be spoiler taken, but I will let you know when spoilers are coming. Yes, so finally Netflix has released the Defenders series, uh, and it, it was good. It was a really good series. One of the main reasons that I think it was so good was the length. Eight episodes is a lovely nugget of information, a lovely nugget of like footage and whatnot. I think that is the perfect amount for a series like this. I feel like 13 episodes is too long, especially for these characters that you're getting used to. So just a lot of drawn out process sometimes. Um, so, so with this, I think eight episodes is absolutely perfect. I've heard they're going back to the 13 episodes again with Punisher and then continuing that and they're only going to be doing the 8 episodes when it comes to the Defenders, which I think is a bit of a misstep personally. I feel like keeping it 8 episodes, 10 at the max, is, is more than enough. So personally I'd like them to go back to the 8 or the 10, but well, you know, hopefully in the future they'll, uh, they'll realise it's a good series. It, um, it's not perfect, I'm not saying it's going to be a perfect series. But these characters really well bounced off each other, especially Iron Fist, because I didn't enjoy the Iron Fist series. You can check my review. I wasn't a massive fan of it, to be honest. It was the weakest out of all the series. But I was, I was right in thinking that he definitely bounced off these characters better, and he works better in this environment with these other more stronger characters. And I actually found myself enjoying the character a lot more in this series than I did in his own series. And I think that's the case. I think he's more of a secondary character than he is his main character in his own place. As far as the story goes, it's basically the culmination of all the um, series put together. Obviously the Hand is the big deal here. The Hand is the main bad guy with Sigourney Weaver's character um, over the top being the main head honcho and then basically having her other henchmen like Madame Gao and so on and so forth. And the basic defenders come together in certain circumstances and end up taking down the hand. And you know, it's a it's a classic kind of superhero theme, but it's a little bit more gritty as we come to expect with these kinds of series. And overall, enjoyable. I mean, negative-wise, I, I, I don't really have much negativity towards this. It was, again, it, because it was a smaller series, it, it, it trimmed away the fat and it just worked a lot better. I suppose nitpicking is, in the final fight, the final finale, I would have liked to see them all in their suits, really. Jessica Jones works fine as she is, because that's her character, but they had Luke Cage with the yellow shirt on earlier in the series. Why not have that at the end, because that is more his character. That's the, the costume he has. And then with Iron Fist, I'm not saying he has to go full-blown green joggers and bandana and all that. I'm not saying that. But I would have liked to see where he has like a green jacket on and that kind of stuff. and. I don't know, green cargo trousers or something like that. Something where it makes you look like that's a kind of modern take on his character, on his costume. But they didn't really have that, and with Luke Cage it was just a black t-shirt and a black hoodie with a little yellow trim. And that, to me I was like, well, if you're doing that early in the series, put that off and put it at the end, because when you finally have these four characters coming together to take down the hand, and take down the main villain, you want them in their costumes, you want that Avengers moment. And we did get that to a point, I suppose, but... I just wanted a little bit more out of it, just a little bit of extra. However, one thing they did really well in this is uh, putting the characters together for the first time when they first see each other and that, I mean, interjecting them and it all made sense, none of it was rushed, it felt earned and it felt needed and it, it worked really well. I also quite like, if you actually seem to notice, it's a very subtle thing that Netflix do with these four characters, is the colour palette that they use. Whenever you've seen Daredevil, there's a very red colour palette to it and, green when it's Iron Fist, yellow when it's Luke Cage, and then kind of blue, grey kind of thing when it's Jessica Jones. The colour palettes that they use through the series and how they mould them together and everything is, is very artistic and it works very, very well. Okay, we're going into spoiler territory now, so make sure you've checked out the series before you check this bit out. If you want to know my final verdict, skip to the end of the video and you'll know that. Spoilers, you've been warned. Um, Sigourney Weaver's character, just getting binned off. I mean, she lasted most of it, she was, it's the second to last episode she was killed off, I think it was. But Elektra killed her off, because Elektra's in this as well, and she's basically being controlled and being called Black Sky. It's being controlled by Sigourney Weaver's character, but over the end she gets a one over on her, and she ends up killing her with the daggers, and that I did not expect at all. I really, because I love Sigourney Weaver, I think she was brilliant in this, she worked really well as that evil character that you really understand and you really kind of connect really quite well with. And then just to kill her like that was quite random. It was, a, it was a shocker, so I let it slide because of how shocked I was. I didn't expect it. Having Danny as ma the main focal point, Iron Fist, when it first became obvious, I was kind of like, uh, I don't know if it's going to work. But as time went on, again, with building the character, working him into these other characters, it worked fine. And it worked into the narrative of the story, the fact that they needed him 
to get to what they wanted, which seemed to be some dragon bones underneath the city, which obviously the Iron Fist and that kind of thing is all connected to him, and Kang Lung and all that stuff. Uh, but, I mean, it was a little bit mm, wish-washy, I suppose, with it, but it's fine, because it gives him a more important role. Because I felt like here was maybe not necessarily as important role, but it gives him a bit more of a focal point. And, you know, to its point it worked. I'll say the action scenes when these guys were fighting, awesome. Every single time, I mean at least three times in the series, it was brilliant. The finale, just an absolute epic beatdown with the Hand and Electric versus the four of them. It was awesome. Basically they've gone to stop the Hand and they've got to destroy the tower. Um, Colleen has made this decision and they all decide eventually to make a decision together to take down the tower. Um, so that it can stop the hand once and for all. And the timer gets screwed up because of, um, what's the face, the cop girl, I can't remember her bloody name now. Her and uh, Colleen and uh, Claire as well, they all get involved and they start fighting, um, what's his face, he comes back from the dead, I can't remember his bloody name now, he's not very memorable to be honest. He takes off um, the cop girl's arm, can't remember her name again, which is awesome because in the comics she gets a bionic arm and I've seen uh, recently that they've just released the first picture of it, which is a cool way to bring that into the next Luke Cage series. Um, and then as the bombs are going off, they just, they're just they all trying to get out of there and Daredevil stays behind, you know, Matt Murdock stays behind to try and reason with Electra because obviously they had a past as well, and try and reason with her and stop her doing what she's doing and off they go. The building collapses on Daredevil and Electra. I'm like, oh my god, they killed Daredevil. Electra, I don't mind dying because she's a bad guy. Like that it, it, it kind of makes sense. It's like I don't really need any more from that character. They've done quite a lot with her. But Daredevil, you can't kill Daredevil. He's like the Captain America or the Iron Man of these Netflix series. You can't kill the main character. And I was really so, so relieved to find out at the end that he's not actually dead and he survived. And the last thing you see is in waking up in a bed with nuns and his mother, as we know in the comics, is a nun and you hear her name being mentioned and that's the last thing you see. But the whole time they made it seem like he was dead. They had the final closing moments with each and every character um, and it, it generally made you feel, yep, Daredevil's gone. And then the last thing you see is Iron Fist on the, on, the, on the roof and then the next scene obviously is Matt Murdock waking up. And that, it was a good closing. Honestly, I'll be honest, it closed off every single character really, really well. It gave you the shock value of thinking dead was gone and then taking it back and going, oh god, no, he's actually still alive, thank god. And yeah, I mean, overall the series, I think, was a, a good ending. It was a good ending because, again, like I said, it, it ties off the characters nicely, but it also brings options for them to go forward into the next series. And it leaves you with a lot of questions to, unanswered and, you know, that's a good way to end a, a, a series. For real, guys, Defenders Season 1 good season. Probably one of the best that they've done. Again, it's a lot to do with the fact that they trimmed the fat and made it down to eight episodes. These characters, seeing them together for the first time is awesome. Putting them all together in these fighting scenes. This storyline worked quite well. Yes, there were some nitpicky here, things here and there. Not everything landed, but overall really enjoyable. It is like the mini Avengers and, uh, you know, it's always exciting to see when these characters all come together and bounce off each other so well. And no, it's not a perfect season, but it was still a great season, and I think it's absolutely fair to give it four stars. So that's what I thought of Defenders Season 1. What did you think about it? Let me know down in the comments or send me an email. You can also find me in the various social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, moviepilot.com. Just type in Nerdbites anywhere, and I'm sure you'll find me. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share my videos. And of course, keep it nerdy.